Hi everyone, welcome back to our uh, Over the Limit podcast. Uh, it's episode 14, if we are not mistaken, uh, to follow Lawrence's guide, so it might be wrong. You even remember the name of the podcast. <coughs> yeah, you just told me before. <laughs> um, yeah, so we just both finished our 24 hours of spa weekend. Um, I think you well, you saw the sec- checkered flag. I didn't, unfortunately. Um, we'll probably, well, let's start off with that. I mean, how was... How was your experience in the 24 hours of spa? Um, yeah, well, hello everybody. Um, so, so, it's difficult to to pinpoint. Obviously I did, or we did not have like the preparation for like you have because we just, just came for that one-off race. So and it was quite limited time to prepare, especially there was, I mean, there's not a lot of practice. I only realized the day before <laughs> and then it was wet half the time and one practice got canceled. So, uh, not much time and the race itself. Um, I think we, we were quite competitive. We didn't have a good super pole. So we started 14th. Uh, I took the start. Um, you had a good uh, first in there, huh? double stint. Yeah, it was, it actually was fun. Um, a good, I mean, it took it easy to start because it was still quite a bit of, of oh. wet and the rouge was wet. Yeah, somebody even managed to uh, crash. In the warm-up lab. <laughs> like, Jesus. <laughs> Poor guy. But, yeah. I don't know who it was, but but it's not the day of his life. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, I spent, <laughs> I mean, I don't know who it was. I asked on the radio and they just told me it's Mr. Nobody. But I spent my whole first stint behind someone. He was defending like it was the last lap of the race. And you don't know who it was? No, an Audi driver. For sure you know. You uh, no, in the Mark VDS Audi car. Ah. I don't know. Anyhow, once I got past him, um, I could make my way up uh, up front. And the car was good and it seemed like we had a good pace. Um, I had a little contact in my second to last lap. Which yeah, kind of ruined the I party. saw that. <laughs> I was like, I was putting my helmet on. I think Shield was, no, I'm not sure if Shield was there. Um, my dad was behind me and we were like, oh. <laughs> yeah, I was as well like, fuck, it's just like the two hours, really good, good pace, overtook everyone and now I'm going to do this. But I mean, I just, I was kind of excited because it was going well. And then yeah, you get in this moment. They, they broke, er, they braked early and then I was like, okay, I go for it because we can break quite late with the Porsche somehow. But then they all slowed down because they were all together. And I yeah, but I this car you hit was also like a proper M car. I overtook it sixty times, I think, yeah, and I didn't even do the whole race. I'll come back to that later <coughs> for the story. But yeah, so um, then we were quite well. We ran in the top three for I think a long, long time. Um, then obviously we got a ten second penalty for my hit, um, which we didn't even lose a place in the end because we could run up front and make a gap. Joke. Uh, and then we got our first 30 second penalty for track limits. Oh, you got two? Yeah. No way. Yeah. Um, yeah. Don't, that's, that wasn't really. I didn't know that. I only thought you had one. Well, I didn't see the half of the race, but. Well, it's it's always all the three of the drivers fault, but it was, yeah, it was just a bit stupid. But, um, but yeah, it wasn't the beginning of the race. So also one safety car and, and we were back. Um, and we were running up front, was going well. Uh, car was, was difficult to drive. I mean, yeah? Yeah, it's... It was good, it was quick, but we it was always loose on entries on medium speed corners. So you always had like, it's also typical Pirelli, you always had like to fight it and, and, and then I had some understeer after in slow speed um, and behind other cars we lose like, I don't know if it's the same for all, all the other cars, but we lose so much. Yeah, we also grip when we drive behind other cars so it's it was quite exhausting to drive like Blanchiment I mean it yeah. was trying to kill you every lap and the <laughs> Rouge it was great it was flat every lap most of the times yeah if you were not close on track limits and Blanchiment like two or three times I passed Blanchiment completely like 90 degree angle it was super difficult but I mean we were quick but then during the night we uh, we had a lot of pickup issues like the track temperature right. was cold and after 10 laps we had pick up on the tire and then it was, yeah, never get rid of it. Especially me because I drive more, let's say, gentle compared to Kevin. Kevin is quite aggressive um, and he has obviously less problems than with it because he's putting more stress on the tire. Um, so the night was, was frustrating. Um, I remember I went out, new tires, first two laps, 
really good. And the third lap, I ran wide in karting over the curb through the whole pickup. And I was like, fuck. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there goes my stint. I never got rid of it again. It was like horrible. But yeah, then the end of the race, uh, when it was getting hotter, it would start to be a bit better again. Um, but then we got our second uh, Who was track the, limit. Who was the, the main... Well, every time Julia was in the car, but he was always at the end of the six hours. Yeah. So. But yeah, we all did track limits, but yeah, it's, it's what it's, we got 30 seconds. Um, and that was a bit, that cost us track position with five hours to go, six hours to go, um, which we then had to catch up. And I mean, pace wise, we could have finished second, I think, um, before the BMW and the Audi. Um, but we couldn't get by in the last one half hour. Um, yeah, you also had no diffuser anymore. Yeah, we lost the diffuser with two hours to go because another Audi was blocking Kevin. He was laps down, typical spotting. And then he got hit from behind and the diffuser went. But funny enough, uh, we didn't lose any pace. And then maybe Porsche should oh, reconsider yeah. their I diffuser. Asked, like, who, who developed the diffuser? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but seriously, if you don't lose anything. Yeah, I mean. It's actually quite it, bad. I'm not gonna comment. Like that. It was a bit surprising. I mean, it's what? It's like 50 kilos of diffuser, or is it? No, not 10. There you go. <laughs> we lost a lot of weight at top speed, but Kevin said that we we had a lot of oversteer and understeer. We were struggling a bit, and then with diffuser was gone. We only had oversteer, so somehow it was a bit easier, you know, to manage. And I guess we gained a couple of kilometers on the straight, but. Anyway, we couldn't get by. He tried with Nicky team and, and with Gunnar, but he couldn't get by. So we finished fourth. But um, yeah, this stupid BMWs, they were quick at the end of the <laughs> race. Um, so we couldn't, I think we didn't have a chance against them. But uh, yeah, Ford is quite as a pretty shitty, at least the podium would have been nice. Yeah. Even though it was, it's a one-off race, you only want to win. But um, it was, it was, it was good. It was. It was fun, some typical 24 spa frustrations, which we'll maybe dig in a bit deeper later. But um, I think, yeah, except the penalties and, and, and some s difficult to drive, we did the best we could. I mean, but Manta, it's always, it's, let's say, a private team, but it's it's almost a factory yeah, team. Yeah, it's both, so basically, yeah. Yeah, it was super well prepared and and i mean they're always on it you come there everything's prepared the car was good but uh yeah no no trophies in 24 hour races for me this year which is you didn't have any yet i always try to aim every year for like hope for one championship or one 24 hour race last year no this year no you still have something coming up well whack championship but i'm not gonna win that anymore oh it's a dry year yeah <laughs> dry years <laughs> uh, yeah how was yeah. it for you yeah of course not uh, not so great I mean it all started very well um, because we didn't make it into Super Bowl um, well like also because, uh, part because of me uh, yeah I, what happened there I, I, I read something on Twitter but yeah I was on a good lap on Q1 uh, Q2 it would have been top 3 or it's always shitty to say yeah. I was going to be P1, but it was a good. It was very good, and um, a guy sp spun in front of me, and it was at karting, and I just came round and he was. I saw his lights going, and I saw the Lambo going to the right, so I lifted and I braked and I saw a gap in the middle, but I was yeah the guy kept spinning and I said okay I go through I tried to go through the middle because if I was going to brake at that moment I would have either hit the Lambo or I had to go left to the gravel or whatever. So I decided to go f through the gap and I just didn't make it. And I had, considering the gap I went through, I had a very small contact and I just broke a wishbone on the front or a steering rack or whatever it okay. is. And they, fi and they fixed it and it was done. I okay. thought the car was completely done because I went in the pit lane like this, I the whole rim was destroyed. Um, I didn't know. I thought you had a small contact. But yeah, it was quite, well, it was... Yeah. I mean, considering, actually, considering the touch, I thought it was much more, but it was only this. Um, and then, yeah, even Sheldon and Charles, they did a great job in Q3 and 4, but we just missed out P22. Mm. Um, 
Yeah, and then the race, to be honest, uh, it's my sixth spa I'm trying. And uh, I, I really had a good feeling this year. I really, after the first few stints, I really thought, okay, fuck, we, we, are, we can fight. And uh, we were leading most of the race until we crashed. Um, yeah, I had one stint in the night where I had to do 15 minutes and then come in full fuel on the same set, which was, was so hard stint. They were all yeah. behind me on new tires and I tried to stay in front, which I could manage. In sector two and three, uh, I could because I was watching it and I was wondering from because yeah, you lost, yeah, they had a bit more pace, but I didn't yeah. know you were in used tires. So I was okay. trying to stru- uh, hold on, but in sector one, I had I w- we I were saw. so slow every the whole weekend already. We were compared to all the other BMWs, the slowest on sector. Was the one. turbo boost button broken? Or? No, I think we just <laughs> had I don't know. Also compared, well anyway. Um, so yeah, that was a difficult stint because I made one mistake and then I lost two positions immediately. And then I had a moment with Philip Eng. <laughs> yeah. He, um, they I didn't tell me he was behind me. On I think I saw it was difficult to see on TV, but I was watching at that moment and it he w- looked like there was something happening, but it didn't really show it. They he so I was I didn't know he was he was there. Ah, he was on new tires. So. Um, I I was driving and I was defending. I'm like, who is this fucker behind me, flashing me the whole time? And they didn't tell me he was on new tires. It was not a BMW because otherwise I would have let him by. And at one stage in going going to Bruxelles, the long mm-hmm. right-handed downhill, um, I defended and he went outside. And I saw it was a whole car. Like, ah oh, shit! But he did the move already, like let's say seventy percent. And then I let, and then I just let him go because I I knew it was a BMW then. Yeah. And then this fucker, I don't know if you saw already once, our rain light is very strong. Like, it's very, very yeah. bright. And he put it on for the half the lap after. I couldn't see anything anymore. <laughs> I was like, you fucker. And then after the race, we had a laugh about it. I saw people doing this. It, 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 I think it's a new trend, no? Because that. somebody did it. And Kevin and me were like, let's try it. Why is he, is he doing it to annoy the guy behind him? Like... Yeah, probably. So I never thought about that. That was actually a great idea. Actually, it's really good. Actually, especially for our car, it's very bright. But they in America if you do that. <laughs> <laughs> they, would, they would get completely nuts. Um, so, but he did it to a lot of cars, apparently. Not oh, only yeah? to me, to a Mercedes, to a Porsche. Because it's annoying. It is annoying. And it's actually not a bad idea. I mean, it's not, not allowed. So That's not very friendly, no. Um, yeah, and then uh, I had a new set afterwards, so I, I got him again. I overtook him, and then I could pull away, but he always stayed quite close. Um, yeah, and then unfortunately we got we got uh, hit from behind uh, in a full course yellow, which was not a full course yellow, um, which at the end is a fuck up from... We'll come that to that in the gossip era after, maybe. Huh? We'll talk to, about that in detail, about yeah. the gossip uh, section. Yeah. Uh. Um, yeah, it must be because it's, uh, it's a joke. Um, but unfortunately, yeah, we got taken out. Unfortunately, as well, uh, from the t- our uh, another BMW, another Raw car. But at the end, I mean, it was it was nothing they could have done differently. But uh, what what happened there exactly? Because so uh, Neil Vragni was behind Charles, yeah. and Charles got the countdown on the um, on the, the thing. Display? So there's a display in the car which shows the flags and the full course yellow yeah. and the countdown to full course yellow. Yeah, so it says like 20 seconds, yeah. uh, no more overtaking. No, so it's 20 seconds full course yellow or is that 30 seconds? I don't know. 20 and then 10 and then it counts down. Yeah. And at zero, you need to be at 80. You need to be at 80. Hour. And the thing was, they were going after a rouge on the camel straight, which is where we get our top speed. Like you go mm. like to 50 to 60. And he was in, yeah, in his ass, like in having a toe. And then Charles was at like eight seconds, so you have to break if you want to be at 80 for for zero. Mm. And he hit the break, and um, uh, Neil, I don't know, I didn't speak to him properly yet uh, if he had the countdown or whatever, Uh, but yeah, he was so close behind him. He he tried to avoid, but when you're so close behind and somebody slams the break to be at 80, it's difficult to... Yeah, but if you get the countdown, you should should think about that, that the guy in front is going to break at one point. Yeah, yeah, especially as you also want to be at 80 at the Focus Yellow. I thought he... I'd imagine he didn't get the message or something, but that's if if he did, then it was kind of his fault. I I have no clue how how the the full thing is, but 
Uh, it was unfortunate for sure because it was two BMWs out and we were very strong. Uh, I think we really should have could really have a, a good fight with the uh, 98 BMW. But yeah, unfortunately we were out and uh, that was it. The car is completely destroyed. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we get a we get another car. Um, and then for the rest, yeah, I was quite emotional actually. Not when I uh, when I woke up and I found out we were out. I just continued sleeping. But then the moment after, just, you know, you realize, and also, especially when they won uh, the Hoka, which at the end, I don't really mind so much because I'm actually really happy. Yeah, but you know it's a chance missed because the exactly. car had the potential. I exactly. Know how it feels, man. And the thing is, um, our thing at BMW is really, really nice. We have a really uh, nice feeling with each other and it's all big family like no joke everybody always says yeah but it cannot be because Andreas listens to our podcast or? he also listens <laughs> I, I spoke without him no but it's seriously everybody, everybody says yeah no they always say this guys but no it's really like we were all happy of course you feel this thing where you missed a chance with your own car for sure I mean and this is what what I got emotional and what annoys me mm. but at the end the feeling that everybody was you know happy for each other I went there and I said congrats of course and then afterwards we had a, a drink all together, which is just nice because I don't think it's everywhere the same like this. Yeah, sure. But for sure, when I when the race was done and I had to go say good uh, good job, like uh, congrats, I was very emotional. Like I really sat down uh, at the pit. Uh, you have the pit wall. Mm. I sat down there for like ten minutes and just was like, yeah, fuck. I mean, it's the sixth time I've got taken out now. The last three, two times. And I never had a proper chance to finish because the only time I finished and then it was even shit again was second and the way how. And then I'm just like, fuck this race. Like, I can't be asked anymore. But at the end, so, we try again next year and then see. But uh, it's just, you know, you don't you don't always get these chances to, to win, you know? That's, a f that's <clears throat> I completely know what you mean because I feel the same. Every time your teammate or another car of your brand manufacturer wins, yeah. yeah, you're happy for the team and the thing, but you know that for yourself, you miss an opportunity because it's not every year that you have the car in the right window. Fair enough, you can't speak about it, but a good BOP uh, mm. to it's, it changes every year. So it's not every year that somebody can be dominant and uh, and win. So yeah, I know how it feels. But I mean, there will be other. You're only what twenty four, twenty five, twenty five. <laughs> You'll have. Uh, plenty of other chances to do it yeah yeah i mean uh, they always say yeah next year but i'm saying this already for the last four years sure I know, but, but it's it's yeah it's a hard race for me it's the hardest race to win i mean of course also maybe because i never won it yet but it everything needs to go right perfectly like in nurburgring everything needs to go right and you need to do a good job and you need to be fast but i feel spice even more everything has to be even more right i feel like I think every every of if you do like Daytona, Spa, Nürburgring, Le Mans, they're all difficult to win. There's all it just has different requirements to win. Yeah. Um, I find Daytona hard to win, and you 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 find it hard because, or I find because I haven't won Daytona yet, and yeah. I've won Spa twice, so you, you naturally say that. But, but it's um, it's. 100% it's the biggest CT3 race in the world the competition in terms of like one class is I think by far the highest in, yeah. in any race every all the best CT3 drivers teams cars are there so it's that's why you say it's hard to win and it's an awesome race and an awesome event but sorry for language for fuck's sake just some like things which I mean, I don't want to go and do uh, this podcast and every time moan about something about the race afterwards, but no, there's, but there there's are some, always things. some things like in every sport. Yeah. Like, like, uh, like you said with the full cross yellow, it happened twice that they announced a full cross yellow and they literally said, oh, sorry, mistake. Yeah. And this twice. is how I fucked. Yeah. 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 Then the five seconds later, I don't know, we're green. And then every, you saw the images with Guno, we he called it quickly, the team as well. And. And with our guy, I remember Julia was starting to talk on the radio and I was like, green, green, green. And he kept on talking and, and yeah. it shouldn't. Yeah, no, there are yeah. a lot of things that could be improved, but I think it's in every racing series, every yeah. sport. If you look tennis or basketball, for sure, they all have sure. their own 
think so. I think it's normal. I mean, n- nothing is always perfect. It's difficult to. We always strive to perfection, but it's it's never perfect. And but, but this this race weekend, and in general, the the way they do it. I mean, this this weekend was quite bad. Also, every time they say about the blue flags and the the amps, the which at the end they are there for to to for us as well to make the the series. To keep it alive, sorry yeah, to say absolutely. like this. And they're and they're, it's it's they should be and there. They, it's nothing um, against no them, but but then when you make a rule like this, then either do it proper or don't say anything. Because like you said, I mean, for people who don't know the and this has been for years and years, this this blue flag thing, mm. amateurs and even to be honest, also pros. It's not a matter yeah. of amateurs. Yeah, exactly. Cars who are being lapped. lapped down or lapped back, they just ignore the blue flags and somehow. I think in the Porsche it's bad, but I guess other cars as well. If you're behind them, even though GT cars are not UG downforce cars, it's so difficult to pass because you have Eau Rouge. You, it's very difficult to do it flat behind on the car, at least for us. Mm. And it's so difficult to overtake. And like I had, it was okay for me this year. I think not terribly bad. But like Kevin spent the second to last in, which is the most important one, a whole hour behind the car was five laps down. Mm. And he was fighting him, closing the door and ignoring blue flags. Yeah, no, it's it's. I had the same in the night stint for an Audi. I, um, I passed him and I showed him my love on the way on the way by. But it's just a bit more. It should be more controlled from and stricter from race direction and some things. Like th- okay, they were very strict on rate on track limits, which, which is good. Which we pay it's the penalty, but it's good. It's, it's the way it should be. Yeah, but like at night as well, it's a bit like no I said. I I don't know if you're driving. In Blanchimont, there was a crash of the iron. Days. Also, a hundred percent agree. Yeah, I was. The car watching. was in the gravel, twenty meters, I think, 20, 30 meters from the white line. Yeah, Blanchimont, which is a corner. What is the speed? Two forty. Yeah. yeah. Two fifty. There was a double wave yellow flag. Fair enough. The rule is you got to slow down and pay attention. That's Nobody what, respects this. Yeah, I lifted more than you should be, but what? Maybe I was five k slower in the corner if. And, and and I bet there's not many who do more, uh, contrary, mm. because yeah, it's simply the rule. And at lap two, there was a tractor and two marshals standing in front of the car. Like if I would have spun, I would have either, there's a high chance, hit the marshals or hit the truck. Yeah, and then you're fine. And this happened for four laps. And there is, again, with all due respect, also a lot of people, amateurs, run drivers driving at night. It was at night. It's just ridiculous ridiculously dangerous it is 100 percent, and and they don't learn i mean o- there was always something always has to happen first to then think about it again yeah. even though it already happened in the past too many times and always it has to happen again to then change something again but i don't understand why they didn't throw fukers yellow at that point what i mean i it's even the tractor which they used to clean up the the or the yeah. the restart of oh, when I had a restart, I just got in the car and I completely fucked it up because Kevin uh, passed me. The yeah. first lap, you have turn five, yeah. six, seven. It was just full of stones, like yeah, there was no me. line. Yeah. And I mean, then if you put a tractor, then at least let it do the job. Otherwise, don't put a tractor. I mean, what does it make sense for? But you know what? The best is what happened. The same accident in Blanchimont. So they put the car on the truck. On the tow pad, tow pad, whatever you call it. And I went to do the pit stop after the the end of Fulcro's Yellow because they didn't, no, they threw a Fulcro's Yellow eventually when it was almost done. So I pitted and I was in the car and all of a sudden the tow truck was driving a pit lane with the car on it. And I exited my pit stop and I drove the whole pit lane behind this truck who was doing 30 kilometers an hour. And the bottom of the pit lane, he slowed down because he had to make a U-turn. And like we were 10 cars behind him in pit lane doing 30 kilometers an hour. And I was like, how on earth is this possible in a race like this? Yeah. I mean, yeah, those are things which are... It's a great race, but on, on like, and nothing against the race director because I know him and I like him, but on, on those things, it should be... It's unacceptable on those things. They should improve it a bit. But especially if you had... I didn't even know. I mean, yeah. this, <laughs> I, was I, would, go- I, would I was going crazy. crazy. I was also screaming was a lot in, pit lane, but. in the race, like people who they don't see where you drive. I don't understand. You Probably. are, and even our BMW, it's quite a big car. Mm. 
if you flash, you see it. I was in the ass of him, and I sh- uh, we had good speed on the straights. Um, <laughs> and we were com- I was coming up to a, a Merc going to Broshimo, yeah. a yellow one, you know? That was an F- yeah. And he just turns in, and I hit him on his door. And I was like, you f-. I was screaming, and I was, I was showing him my love again. And uh, I hit so many cars, <laughs> it's unbelievable. I so I many had, cars I that hit too. my door. I was like, okay, go in, boff, got hit <laughs> every time in turn one. Yeah, they don't see. I don't understand. How can yeah, you? Yeah, it's. Old? I mean, it's difficult. I know they are focusing on their. There thing, was a lot, a lot of different levels of of drivers in that race, and and yeah, it, it's part of it, and we need to accept that as they need to accept us to get uh, along in, in, in the same thing, but. This thing where, okay, what happened with me in turn one, I'll come back to that later, I take the blame yeah. fully. But the rule is, like, whenever a pro hits uh, gold, silver, or platinum, it's always the fault of the pro. That's yeah. what they say, and they yeah. give a penalty. But, I mean, this also gives, like, the free-for-all for, for the bronze drivers to do what they want. And, yeah. and, and they should also be sometimes more conscious. We should be more careful, they should be more conscious. And... Um, but yeah, it's this. I was my. I had worse in the past. I think maybe it helped because with the bright yellow car, <laughs> maybe they saw it. But I mean, to come back on the turn one thing. So yeah, it was my mistake. Um, the guy was who's that's name? Isaac Tulum Lopez. Yeah, Lopez. Was it him driving? Yeah, I don't know. And um, I mean, I was. I was. I swear I was literally planning on give, I'm texting him saying, hey, sorry, my fault, blah, blah. But I didn't do it immediately because, you know, the race get out of the car and busy and doing that. And uh, I went on, like, Instagram an hour later, and he went doing this, like, complete rant on his stories, tagging me and showing the video. And this is what this is what they call a pro. And, no and, way. And really like that. <laughs> and, like, I texted him on Instagram. I said, dude, I'm, I mean, I'm sorry. It was my mistake. I want, I'm, I'm apologizing to you. Um, Hope it didn't have too much influence on your race, blah blah. And I was like, but you could also speak to me directly or text me instead of going on a rant on social media. But if it makes you happy, I mean, do what makes you happy. It's okay. Uh, and he said, yeah, you could have come to me personally and this and that. And I didn't answer anymore. And this morning I went on Twitter. He started again. No way. <laughs> Put the video. Yeah, yeah. And he only got a 10 second penalty and so-called pro and you should have been a drive through and <laughs> I answered him said dude get alive I mean I apologize to you I said it was my mistake I got a penalty I mean move on you want me to buy your dinner or <laughs> <laughs> and then now other drivers join in the Twitter party as well but I mean, uh, that's uh, whatever I mean social yeah anyway social media shit show yeah any other gossip from the race? I saw you had a fight with Kevin. You told me. Yeah, but I fucked it up so bad. Yeah, he was laughing about it because he was late. I was so <laughs> dumb. I, I made it so easy for him. I, I went way too early after the restart. And uh, yeah, I, I was just shocked how good traction you guys have. So out of the last corner, he was for in three my... Ti- for three laps, new tires. We yeah, but I was forward. also on new tires. So I was like, okay, I also can go well on power. But he was in my ass for turn one, and I was like, fuck, now I have to start already. So I didn't have any gap. <laughs> and it was my first stint. I just got in the car, and he, he already did one, which is not an excuse, but at least I use it. Um, and I brake for turn one, and I, I, I hit the brake, and I'm like, oh, fuck, <laughs> I'm not going to make it. <laughs> so then he undercuts me. But honestly, fair play to him. I couldn't follow him anymore. No? I could stay close at one stage. Like, the gap stayed quite similar. But he pulled away the first three, four laps, and then it stayed similar, and then... Yeah, he was quick this weekend. He was driving really well. Yeah, he was he was fast. Yeah. Um, because in, the, in my first double stint I did, I, I think I was very quick compared to... I also was... I did similar uh, average uh, times than him um, after my first double. Okay. I even was half a tenth quicker. So, Kevin. Um, <laughs> no. Um, but then the second stint, I couldn't... And then I was also struggling because then I had to go on the full tank. And also, the thing is, I find I don't know if you heard this, but the Pirelli, you, I never have the same feeling from set to set. It's very. You have it as well. It was yeah, but 
Yes, and I've, I've always felt this in spa, but for us, we, I mean, we also had a little pickup issue at night and that you never know when the pickup is really there and then it's gone and for mm. all two laps and then it's back. And But Mies made, you saw the story which Mies made about the tires? Oh, yeah, yeah, off on lap six yeah, to yeah. seven. <laughs> he said, because it's true, apparently there's a new tire and they made like, out of F1 experience, they've made the tire. <laughs> it's already, we, we drove it this year or it's coming next no, year? No, no, this time. So Mies wrote us, yeah, the new Pirelli has a v F1 uh, technology and they literally <laughs> combined all the tires in one. Lap one to three, super soft. <laughs> lap, I don't know, three to six, uh, medium. You start to feel what's coming. <laughs> lap six to 12, uh, hard, you're in the shit. <laughs> and then next, Inter intermediate, <laughs> it's really bad now. And then wet, you want the box. <laughs> And uh, I mean, not uh, against Pirelli, but it was just funny. Uh, so. It's actually not, it's, it's not, not, not true. <laughs> yeah, they are not uh, easy to, I mean, okay, it's difficult to make a tire which fits on every car, but it's... Uh, yeah, but it's just a shit tire. It's difficult to drive. It's, and that makes the race also, because I, I wanted to do some stories about it after, because people seem to be interested about it. Um, Spa is, for me, it's the most physical race as well. It's yeah, like I also was, like, I also, oh, I have to tell about it, I don't know if I can say. Shit your pants. No, I uh, I have to get a, a night glasses. Okay. I clearly couldn't see shit in the night. <laughs> okay. You know where is this as well? Yeah, also, Faf, Augusto, Faf, where is this? I should try. And I, it's not that I cannot see, but it will only help me. Yeah, but it, I mean, those... Because you wear lenses, right? Yeah, but I do it all the time. Yeah, because I tried now last week to get lenses, like just to try. Man, I, I cannot put, even put them in my eye. I, I, I can't, I can't yeah, touch to my get, eye. You get, need to get used to it. But yeah, check it because maybe you are half blind. No, no, I, I can see well and I see good. Also during the day, I have no problem. But in the night with the lights and shit, I maybe... It's not going to get better when you get older. No, that's why I get the glasses. <laughs> I should try those glasses as well. So. It's good, apparently. Yeah. Oh but yeah, Spice, for me, I, after my last stint, I was like, and, and yesterday I was like, properly, like, even my abs were sore yesterday morning. I lost two kilos. Well, I know. never eat during the race. Yeah, it's not very smart, huh? No, but I weigh now 59. Yeah, but it's like uh, you drive a, a car without fuel, doesn't work very much. I see this with so many drivers, like, I eat so much. I eat as much as I can and I'm, and I don't have any issues at the end of the race. But then I see others, which I'm not going to name, who are eating a sandwich, uh, five spoons of pasta. I mean, I burned 5,000 calories in the race. You need to get yeah, but few. how? Well, it's... it's you a, eat I, your steering wheel when you drive or what? No, I, I mean, you know me. I'm busy with that. That's why you laugh with me when oh, you prepare what you eat and blah, blah, blah. And I do. And I make sure that I eat the right amount of carbs and, and keep fuel in my body and wear this thing and see if I'm still fueled up. Like I eat a lot. Like after every stint, I make sure I eat minimum 125 grams of carbs. <laughs> Even says in grams. Yeah, but it's like 150 <laughs> grams of rice or more. It's like a full plate of rice. You know what I had before I went in the car? Yeah, well, let me finish. And I do that the day before and I do it after every stint and before the stint, I eat again. And even at my last... My second to last stint, I saw that my blood sugar was starting to, to to drop, which means I'm low on fuel, even with all that. So no wonder you and others are getting tired or empty uh, near the end because you're out of fuel. But I mean, nobody really seems to understand the principle of fueling your body in motorsport. Why? So <laughs> <laughs> my rant is over. <laughs> I had a, a Mars and a, an Aquarius. Yeah, well... I felt great. You did half of the race. Yeah, I did two. St I did four stints. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Sherlock. Yeah, that's uh, very well. So, what's up next? I have a weekend off, which I can use, um, and then I have Misano next weekend, and I'm going to, uh, which we didn't do. To Valley, we didn't do a podcast. Yeah, I mean, that was something you had to organize and you didn't do shit. Yeah, I know, but I, I yeah. Just leave it with, yeah, no. Uh, I'm going to his range, ranch, range yeah. on Monday. Well, and I'm going to drive a, a bike. It's not going to help our podcast. 
I know. I'll, I'll I'll try to I'll try to speak there. Maybe we can do it online now with him. Yeah, I can ask. I'll ask when I'm there. You promised everyone who was listening. I know. I will make it work. No worries. Um, so I'm looking forward to this. I hope I don't break a leg or something else. Probably. But um, I mean, I'm very bad. You know, I'm very bad on two wheels. I yeah. can barely drive a bike. But yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward. Andreas, I think when he watches, he will. Yeah, I'll take care. <laughs> I'm not gonna cut anything out. <laughs> um, yeah, now for the rest, nothing. I did my first LMDH test. Yeah, <clears throat> quickly, how was that? Very fun. Um, coming from Le Mans a few weeks before, I really feel the difference. You feel the weight. Like the P2 car is very agile and it's direct. This one is also direct, but it, you feel the weight. Mm. The, the The power is very nice. It's quite good, huh? Um, yeah, it will be fun. I mean, you feel the weight. You in the in the, yeah. in the corners, you feel like a a very quick GT car. Yeah, now you because now you understand that in like some corners we're not that much quicker than an LMP2 car. No, it's, just, it's a heavy car. It's not. It's good downforce, but it's not like crazy amount. No, know? for sure not. That's quite fun to drive. Eh? It's a lot of fun. A lot of things we can you can. I mean, a lot of systems you have to do when mm. when they ask. So you are busy in the dr- in the car, but uh, it's good fun. <laughs> I forgot the anecdote. Our display was starting to f- to flicker a bit, so we have uh, a multi in the Porsche. Yeah, in the G three R to reset the display. And uh, <laughs> I mean, it's a something. It's a new car, so this this baby things we need to improve. And I re- did it, reset it, and it went to black, and then come back. And said, like, can you do it again? I said, but <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult to choose the letter and the number now because I can't see anything anymore. And they were like, uh, three up, four down. <laughs> okay, and then it worked again. It's like, yeah, maybe we should put it on the center console. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, not a bad idea. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm, um, I have six hours of Monza, which we're leaving this afternoon already. Oh, yeah, because you're doing your bike trip. Yeah, so I'm actually going with uh, my sister, or our sister. She was behind. I'm the adopted. <laughs> behind the computer today, to Cologne to pick up my van, um, and then I'm gonna drive to Stuttgart pick up Jacqueline and Emily, and then tomorrow we're going to or it's Monza. So uh, it's this weekend, Monza. Yeah. Ah, I thought it was next weekend. This weekend, and then straight after that, Jacqueline and Emily are going on holiday with her parents, um, and then I'm gonna start my trip. So uh, it's a Sprinter type of bus, which is transformed. To a van. Yeah, where the back has a small kitchen, outdoor shower, solar panels, uh, small bed. I would have just taken a proper van, like a proper motorhome. No, this is cooler. No. Yeah. You have to f- shower outside. Yeah, it's cool. It's a f- experience. I'm going completely alone. I'm going to go do, I'm starting with Stelvio. Then I'm going to drive down to Monaco, which I'm going to do a Col de Turini, Col de Braus. Up to Alpe d'Huez, which is a scary one. The route I took is Alpe d'Huez, Col de Galibier, for some who know. It's 170 kilometers and 5,500 and meters of climbing. You're going to try to beat Van Aert's uh, yeah, no. com? Then thereafter, I'm going to Mont Ventoux, then to Andorra, uh, Girona, and then to Gavea. Oh, so you're driving from Italy to Spain with your bike? No, with a van. Yeah, I know, but yeah, half bike, half van. No, I stop at the place, do the bike tour. And, and who then. drives your van there then? I drive it, you idiot. Oh, yeah, yeah, you <laughs> drive your van and then you go for a bike ride and then you come back. <laughs> this is going to be the Instagram teaser. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Um, but then, uh, yeah, she's going to drive it back with a friend of her because I have to go to um, Shootcut for a sim day. And... Uh, and I've actually have five weeks off, so. Fuck. Yeah, I've never weeks? had that before. So. What are you going to do? I'll ride my bike. No. Yeah. Annoy Jacqueline. <laughs> yeah. I have some stuff to do, sim stuff and everything, but pretty relaxed. First time in a lot of time that I've actually have a real, like, summer break. That's good. It's good yeah. fun. You should do a lot of stuff. Yeah. Okay. That was our 24 hours of spa review. Yeah. Thank was you for listening. No one, but. No, no trophies. No, no glory.
we suck. <laughs> Retire and go play ping pong. <laughs> you can play golf. Thank you for listening. Yes. Um, you know, YouTube, Apple, Spotify. Subscribe. Like. And you know, make Lawrence happy. Yeah. And uh, we'll work on a, we won't have any podcasts in the next three weeks because I won't be here. Uh, and then we'll, Dries will make sure uh, Rossi is. I'm going to make, I'm going to make it work. It's on the podcast. This is my job list. We have some others planned as well, but it will be in, uh, in three, four weeks. So, uh, Okie doke. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Bye.